we see the world the way we are. If you believe that sales is luck, one, I feel bad for you. Two, that's gonna show up in your work ethic and it's gonna show up in your result. If you've never enjoyed extreme success, you've never understood what it is to really succeed, you just don't know your ass from your elbow. So you don't get that taking a two hour fucking lunch is hurting you. In your mind, you're like, what, what's the problem, bro? Somebody wanna narrate why that's a problem? This is the same motherfucker that comes to me, dude, there's just no good people. I can't find any good people. Weird, wonder why? You're living off a of talent. As a leader, you are always considering who? The newest guy in the room. Anytime I walk into a room, the first thing I'm identifying is who is the newest guy in the room? That's my audience. I will cater the entire message to the newest guy in the room. And my example is always to the newest guy in the room, which is why none of you guys have seen me after midnight, which is why none of you guys have ever seen me drunk and you won't. I don't even really like alcohol anymore. It's the risk reward isn't really worth it, but I'm sure the fuck not going hard at two o'clock in the morning with a bunch of reps. That's all kinds of dumb. Risk to reward, not worth it. You get what you are, not what you want. It's an easy way to filter that is what I want a hundred of me. Now I say this with complete humility, I fuck yes, I would love a thousand of me. But if you're honest with yourself, what would you say? Inconsistent in the field, sits down for lunch for two hours, fucking shoots the shit before going out and crushing it. Shows up on time some days, not every day. Attitude's good, attitude's not. I get to see the maturity of the group. How do they respond to that? You don't get what you want, you get what you are. By the way, if you want amazing partners in your life, be an amazing partner. If you wanna make millions of dollars, hang out with and emulate people who make millions of dollars. If you wanna have a great body, hang out with people who have a great body. You get what you are, not what you want. Give you an example. Somebody doesn't have a million dollar mind, you give a million dollars, what's gonna happen? How do we know that? Well, we statistically know that. How many lottery winners go bankrupt or lose all their money within five fucking years? I think it's like 78% or some shit. It's high, not wild. How many people use some other method to lose weight? Ozempic's the new crush. But we've been doing this for ever. Liposuction used to be a thing, I don't know if it still is. Literally just suck all the fucking fat out of your body. Except for if we don't change the mind, what happens? It either grows back or they become skinny fat and they're still fucking unhealthy. Why? Because we didn't actually deal with the real issue. If you want to change your life, you have to change the values you're showing up under. And we always do what we value most. The guy who wants to go spend two hours at fucking lunch, what is he valuing? More than going out and crushing. Whatever the fuck. It's not making money. Turns out when you love and respect money, it returns the favor. You'll get what you respect and honor. So one of the great mysteries of the Western civilization. How often do we, especially right now, hate on rich people, but secretly want to be rich? Not even fucking secretly. How fucking dumb is that? That's our generation right now. Ripping on people who are wealthy, believing they inherited all their wealth, right? Totally false. All while the while, we want to be financially stable. Those two are incompatible. Can't hate on a successful business owner and hope to be one. Can't be jealous of successful relationships and hope to have one. Can't make excuses why other people have a great body and you don't and think you're gonna get one. Don't get what you want, get what you are. So, you lead by example or you don't lead at all. Which means leadership sucks. Cause there's lots of things, like fuck I'd love to drop off my dry cleaning right now. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that though, why? Cause I got Johnny New Guy in my car with me. Had this owner in Dallas a few years ago. He's talking to me about his guy and he's like, bro, how do I help this guy? I'm like, well, what happened? He goes, he went and got a two hour haircut. I don't think you, dude, how do you get a two hour haircut? I'm like, didn't matter. He gets quiet. He goes, how do I coach this guy? I go, you go get a haircut with him? Sabs, come on. It was during lunch and I ran across the street. It took 15 minutes. Except for he saw, oh, that's cool. We're on the clock, but I can go get a haircut. So of course he ran it. Cause he's looking around like, what does winning look like? What is acceptable? What's okay? So leadership sucks because you're trying to build an army of badasses, which means you have to show up as what? A badass all of the fucking time, not just when you want to. That's tough because it asks more of you. I'm not about to tell you leadership is awesome. It's not, it sucks. Way better than the alternative, but it still sucks. It means you, makes the, you make decisions based on what's best for the, the newest guy in the room, not what's best for you. People are paying attention far more about how you show up than what you say. Now, if there's an integrity to what you say, they'll feel it. Give you an example. I could have two people come up and present to you guys on how to become a, worth $100 million in the next five years. After their presentation, and I literally could be the exact same presentation, after the presentation, I could pull everybody in the room and I go, hey, which one of these presenters did you like better? Which one resonated with you more? Without you knowing it, there's at least an 80% chance 
that you would pick the guy that's worth $100 million, not knowing the other guy's never made more than $50,000 a year. You would just know it, you'd feel it. And the reason you'd feel it is there is a different conviction and integrity to what that person is saying than the guy who's never done it. One is speaking from at best theory and the other one has experiential knowledge. We tend to feel and resonate with people who have experiential knowledge about what we're talking about without ever labeling it that. You may not know, you're just like, what that guy's saying is legit. What you're feeling is the integrity of their message, meaning what they are saying is what they are. The opposite is also true. Without even knowing it, there are probably people you met where you're like, dude, that guy is full of shit. You don't even know why. You can just feel it. Why? Because what they're saying and what they believe are not in alignment. Make sense? So words matter to that degree, but there are great leaders who are super quiet, don't have a lot to say. They just go out and get it done. And you're looking for people who will emulate that. And you do that generally by building relationship with people, especially in the beginning. In our business, that's where it starts. 72 hour rule. Everybody know that one? What is it? People don't care how much you know to they know how much you care. You ever noticed? Maybe it's n nobody in this room, I'm sure. But you date the same kind of people because we don't get what we want, we get what we are. If you wanna change the kind of person you're dating, change the person that you are. Or you can lie to yourself and just think all the good people are gone. They don't exist anymore. I've heard it all. Why is this? Well, in principle, we don't see the world the way it is. We see the world the way we are. If you believe that sales is luck, one, I feel bad for you. Two, that's gonna show up in your work ethic and it's gonna show up in your result. I secretly probably 40% of the people in this room are still trying to wrestle with the idea that sales isn't luck. Sales is inconsistent. Tell me that. Yeah, that's real inconsistent. But if your story, your internal story is, yeah, sales is lucky, well, it's gonna show up. It's gonna show up in how you show up in your business. It's gonna show up in how you teach your guys. It's gonna show up in your result. I'll visualize it this way. It's the hot coal. In my coaching practice, I run into this a lot. I walk up to somebody. Hey, what's going on? I'm holding on to this hot coal and it hurts so bad. I need some help. Oh, oh, perfect, I got it. Just drop the coal. Oh, no, 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 I can't. Can you give me something for the pain? Oh yeah, no, no problem, just drop the coal. No, 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 I gotta, I, can, can you just help me? I'm, oh my God, it's so bad, I'm, it hurts so bad. You have no idea what it's like to hurt like this. Oh, bro, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah just fucking drop the hot coal. No, 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 no. What the fuck? That's humanity. That is how humanity shows up. Now, I don't wanna drop my fucking hot coal. Tell me it's gonna be okay to hold on to my hot coal. Feel sorry for me for holding on to my hot coal. Give me something for the pain. Make me an exception. Create an identity around it. Or drop the fucking hot coal. Meaning, if your story is making you miserable, fucking change it. Well, that's a novel idea. First rule of thumb, do not listen to somebody who is miserable. I got my my granola vegan friends, they're not all this way, by the way. I do have some very healthy vegan friends. But there's a lot of them. You just look in their eyes and you're like, you're stressed out and you are hating the world. And when you go out to eat, you're like just scouring the menu with like, I can't eat here. Like, I don't wanna fucking be you. Or the religious folk who just think everything's gonna go to hell in a handbasket. I saw an old friend I hadn't seen in some while yesterday and he's like, it's the end of the world. The United States is done. I'm like, no bro, best days of this country are still ahead of it, I promise you, it's over. Maybe for you. And the reason we do this, by the way, is there is a deep psychological need to be congruent with how we see ourselves in the world. So we will constantly look for things in our environment that reinforce our story of the environment. Constantly. You can find what you're focused on. You will find what you're focused on. You are hardwired that way. What you just gotta understand is you get to choose what you are focusing on. Someone in this room believed, no, I see the world objectively. I'm not a pessimist, I'm a realist. Yeah, you are. We don't see the world the way it is. We see the world the way we are, which is why it's super frustrating. There is not one diet that will work for everyone. There is not one formula that will work for everyone. You could have the most amazing business opportunity and still X amount of society will not be able to pull it off because they don't have the fucking brain's mind to see it. Worse, that's the group that'll turn around and go, scam! Why, cause your ass can't get out of bed? Yeah, I'm sure. That diet doesn't work. No bro, you don't fucking work. 